Welcome Climate Viewers, this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com ClimateViewer.org and WeatherModificationHistory.com So I just recently did a debate with uh, Mick West and uh, I got a lot of feedback on that ranging from you killed it to holy crap um, Jim doesn't believe in you know military chemtrails he just thinks it's all jet fuel and this nothing could be further from the truth I have on year after year after year said that both can be happening simultaneously that we can have commercial aviation pollution creating clouds which are serious clouds which is a problem and we can have military intervention uh, creating geoengineering all of that sort of thing so and I, and I do regret not bringing that up during the debate. Um, I'm not going to read, you know, show you the personal direct messages between Mick West and I. But I showed him what I'm about to show you. And he agreed that this is 100% legit. So that would have been great to have during the debate. But there's no time like today to go ahead and educate you on all of the military aspects of this and this secret government programs for chemtrails aka artificial clouds what they have to do with satellite surveillance and what do they have to do with directed energy weapons so let's get into that right away um i did a previous presentation on this it was called carbon black dust the chemtrail secret for weather warfare geoengineering and ozone destruction and this really breaks down the difference between the two. Um, for those uh, you know that are saying uh, Brian Jones in chat saying he didn't get a notification, follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Climate Viewer, Facebook.com slash Climate Viewer, Twitter.com slash Climate Viewer. I always tweet out in Facebook posts before I go live. Um, that might help out for you guys. And also, like I, I'd like to, you know, say if you've never, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time seeing, please subscribe. Links right there in this, um, the bottom of that uh, beautiful uh, visage of myself, and um, everything that you see is uh, free of charge, open source, and I'd like uh, your support. So I greatly appreciate everybody who supports me on Patreon, or gives a one-time donation on PayPal or GoFundMe. Um, everything I do is open source. You're free to remix this video, download it, any of my material. Just please give a link back to the original, or if it's a video, keep the link in the descriptions. You know all of the information, please. So in this uh, in this uh, presentation I did, I I break down the difference between the two, um, and, and you know really. This is the thing that people don't get that it's it doesn't have to be every single plane is in on a secret agenda that there's clear evidence the military has reasons to create clouds and I have the proof I have Freedom of Information Act requests um, these are as legit as shit um, so buckle your seatbelts I'm going to go through this really quickly this will not this will be the abridged version of the other video I did real quick. So, uh, weather warfare, U.S. Air Force and Navy FOIA documents and presentations, geoengineering, carbon black dust and soot carries metals and sulfur into the stratosphere, ozone, carbon blast, black dust and soot levitates into the stratosphere, metals and sulfur destroy the ozone, is released in the exhaust of jet aircraft by burning fuel soot or dumped, pumped from military aircraft carbon black. Now, there is a difference between carbon black dust and carbon and soot. Um, I'm not going to get into the details. If you want to, watch the video that I did on this presentation. I go into great uh, detail about all of this. But this is a PowerPoint presentation. You can download it yourself. You can send it to anybody. Um, so on the left, we have military use, which is carbon black dust. Um, increase cirrus cloud covered. Increase decrease precipitation. Dissipate fog. Hurricane modification. Increase decrease precipitation. These are scientific weather modification uses of carbon black dust. And then over on the other side, we have commercial aviation. So it does similar things. Increase cirrus cloud cover. Alter rainfall patterns. Affect solar radiation. Cools by day. Traps heat by night. Um, 
let's let's just get along real quickly through this because I want to get into the important stuff. So yes, there are metals coming out of planes, ozone destruction, so it levitates, um, how it affects human health and all biology on the planet. Harry Wex are warning about how jet rocket exhaust can uh, screw with the atmosphere. Um, you know, and I call this chemtrails from space. You can see my entire playlist on YouTube about that or check the references on my article, Aluminum, Barium, and Chemtrails from Space. Um, 10 technologies to control the weather today. All the ionospheric heaters and space vents uh, related radars of the world can be found at climateviewer.org. Artificial cloud creation history. So 1958, Palm Springs gripes about uh, jets blocking out the sun. Air Force gives village two choices, live with the trails or move. Let's face it, men, said a crisp talking star-studded general, you either have to live with the vapor trails or move the city of Palm Springs. Hilarious. Oh, but wait. Navy scientist creates clouds, then breaks them up. Another um, newspaper article. This is 1958. Navy creation destroys clouds. Ordinary carbon black is used. So right here in the details at the bottom, we dropped one and a half pound uh, dry packages of carbon black. We produced single clouds with each drop. So this is the military creating clouds using just dumped, pumped, carbon black dust the navy team seeded seven clouds with carbon and dissipated each of them in from two and a half to 20 minutes each cloud turned gray and then rapidly disappeared dr florence van stratton said aside from the cost of the airplanes we spent less than five dollars on the experiments in georgia so it's real cheap it modifies the weather carbon black dust used by the u.s navy to create clouds all right let's continue uh john f kennedy 1961 we shall propose further cooperative efforts between all nations in weather prediction and eventually weather control uh from my original image right here So let's continue along. He also said, and this gets to the directed energy part of things, control of space means control of the world. From space, the masters of infinity would have the power to control Earth's weather, to cause drought and flood, to change the tides and raise the levels of the sea, to divert the Gulf Stream and change temperate climates to frigid. My gosh. Now that's a mouthful. So... Lyndon Johnson went on to do Operation Popeye with the weather warfare in Vietnam. He authorized it. So, just a heads up on that. Um, audio should not be off. Audio should be fine. Unmute your crap. Um, stream hangs. Not good. I've got, I've got green lights everywhere. Um, so, must be on your end. Two states sue over Black Belch on the possibility of weather modification uh, by aircraft contrails. It is likely that contrails are affecting precipitation to a much greater extent than present deliberate cloud seeding operations. 1970 on the dot, 1970. <laughs> um, and then using uh, weather modification by carbon dust absorption and solar energy using carbon black dust to steer hurricanes 1976 i believe it is yes um acid rain but let's get to the important stuff so here are the foyas that, that this is the undeniable truth about the military side of weather warfare this is from a Freedom of Information Act request, SpaceCast 2020. Um, and in it, it said, Previous Russian weather modification effort. 
redacted big block missing and then it said this demonstrated the ability to generate infrared defeating clouds effectively denying overhead surveillance so this was talking about a long time ago russia creating clouds to block out spy satellites this makes sense this makes total sense this is from 1994 and this comes from the sunshine project they did a foia u.s air force freedom of information act request document titled weather modification using carbon black proposed by air u.s air force phillips laboratory geophysics directorate to achieve precipitation enhancement to create cirrus clouds and to dissipate fog and low clouds employed precipitation enhancement techniques to muddy the ho chi minh trail reducing the flow of supplies in north vietnam so this was actually also used during vietnam allegedly so carbon black dust u.s naval warfare center is up next u.s naval warfare center non-lethal warfare proposal weather modification by the Naval Air Weapons Station at China Lake. Here is their cold cloud modification system bombs they use to do cloud seeding. Here is the FOIA over here on the side. And of course, right here at the bottom is a link to weathermodificationhistory.com. I will be showing you those links as well. All of this is in the, the presentation PowerPoint. You can download it and read it yourself. Then in 1995 through 96, both of those FOIAs were, were from 90, all three of those FOIAs that I just showed you about weather modification using carbon black and creating artificial clouds were from 1994. Then what happened? 1995 and 96, that's when the Air Force 2025 papers came out. And the most famous of those papers was weather as a force multiplier owning the weather in 2025. The most important, what up Mike Morales in chat, my ninja. Um, the most important thing that I saw while going through this document was this chart. And in this chart, it shows what we have now, what we plan on using in the future to own the weather in 2025. And right here at 2005, it says CBD. And if you look down here, CBD equals carbon black dust and it has a star next to it the star means technologies to be developed by the department of defense interestingly enough the air force the freedom of information at request which i just showed you right here which was by the u.s air force phillips laboratory to prove it's real, they did Owning the Weather in 2025, and then the very next year in 1997, Dr. Arnold uh, A. Barnes Jr. from the Optical Effects Division of the Phillips Laboratory had a joint Army Air Force meeting called Test Technology Symposium 97, Weather Modification, How Will the Army After Next... How, the army after next how will we test weather modification and he goes into great detail about all of the different ways that we can own the weather in 2025 for real he cites all of the stuff that we did during the ho chi minh trail stuff over vietnam and laos um and weather modification using carbon black there were two slides in his presentation on this Slide one, increased precipitation, muddy dirt roads, yada yada, decreased precipitation, shut off rainfall. This is the military creating drought. All right. Slide two, and this is your smoking gun slide, military chemtrails. What the F are they doing? It says it right there in bold, in front of your face. Increase cirrus cloud cover using carbon black dust why why would the military want to create clouds to deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance to block out spy satellites that's the important part okay 
that they can create a blanket of clouds and then the military from China or Russia or anybody else who's got spies in the sky, um, even high flying planes like the U-2 plane, um, that these planes, these satellites cannot see what's going on on the ground. That's why the military in this presentation from the U.S. Air Force Phillips Lab, which was in the FOIA talking about weather warfare using carbon black dust, say they would create cirrus clouds. And cirrus clouds are what we see um, when we call them chemtrails. That is what we're seeing. And especially if you're seeing a white unmarked military aircraft creating a bunch of clouds, this is possibly what's going on. The other reason they say that they create clouds is to decrease light level for nighttime operations. Now, for me, this was like, a, oh, why didn't I think of that? So you're in Iraq and you got the Republican Guard you're taking on and it's nighttime and we love nighttime operations. Why? We've got very expensive equipment and everybody's got night vision. Guess what? Do you think the Iraqis had a whole bunch of night vision goggles? Hell no. So how do you exacerbate that problem? Create a bunch of freaking clouds that block out the moonlight and make it even worse. Um, Steve, if only Mick West was watching this. I sent all of this to Mick West um, after I did the interview with him and he basically was like, I was reading the comments. Do you really think you changed anybody's opinion? And how helpful was that? And I was like, but dude, I could have gone way harder on you. I was being a gentleman and making this about your fascination with the C word. I mean, you really don't like the C word, um, but I could have really beat the hell out of you. And I was a gentleman about it because if I had brought up all these FOIAs, you'd be looking like an asshole. Um, and so now that's why I'm making this video because I got so many comments on the Mick West debate about why didn't you, know, Jim believes that this is all just pollution. No, I've said for years, it, it is pollution coming from commercial aviation for the most part. And there is military, CIA, Air Force, U.S. Navy, specifically Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and Navy at China Lake, California. You can't get more specific than me. I mean, there's a whole lot of people talking a whole lot of shit, and I'm the only one telling you exactly who, okay? They say t they tinker with everything, someone says. How about Tinker Air Force Base? Won't get into that one, but anyway. Um, back to the, the presentation. So this is your smoking gun proof right now. Why the military say they want to create clouds, okay? And then I go on to talk about jet fuel and how NATO's involved and how it coincides with the chemtrail word being used for the first time on the internet in 1997. Um, and that was during a switch from gasoline to kerosene-based fuels. And, you know, um, Drone, Wolf, Drone Wolf Media says, you held back, sure, Jim. I did hold back a little bit because I was trying to be a gentleman about it. And I've been debating uh, Mick West for 10 damn years on his own forum. I know how his mind works. So I wanted to beat him at his own game. Anyway, this thing goes on and on and on. Talks about the aluminum, the strontium, the titanium, the barium that's in the jet fuel and all of that. And I go through both sides of things. And of course, here we are today. History repeating itself, 2008, Homeland Security, uh, Department of Homeland Security, Hurricane Modification Workshop, and the image over here, uh, flight, uh, fleet of transport aircraft flying at 50,000 feet drop soot in the path of targeted area of hurricane. Soot is warmed by the sun, heating and he heating the cool air around it and the at the very top of the hurricane and reduces the I'm having trouble reading it because my monitor is so far away and let me just blow it up right here in front of me come over here make it easier for me to read um, this reduces the flow of the air within the hurricane and slows it down depending on where and when the soot is dropped this will the now weakened hurricane will change course steering hurricanes 
Uh, I know you're agreeing with me, Drone Wolf. No wor- no, no worries, bro. No worries, bro. This is, this is all good. I mean, I was called a beaker the other day. <laughs> I think I think I can take it. Me 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 me. Um, my hair does get crazy. I, I tend to wait till the last minute to get it trimmed back up, which I did. As you can see, it's all trimmed up right now because I'm going to the beach in a couple of days, and I can't wait to have a nice little breaky break. And I hope that you guys can make it to a beach or someplace fun soon. It is summertime. That's why there's less videos going on right now. Love you, mean it. Um, and I'm not going to go through the rest of this entire um, thing, but contrail control and, you know, how it relates to volcanic eruptions and, you know, what people are saying about the greenhouse gas, jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control. This is more of the commercial aviation side of things, um, and how they're using jet, you know, jet fuel control, um, to create clouds, but that's what, not what this video is about. So anyway, you guys can go through the entire PowerPoint presentation, see how I went to the EPA hearing on it, talk about um, accidental geoengineering, airplane contrails may be creating accidental geoengineering, and we're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming with ship tracks. Um, so anyway, geoengineering, sulfur dope fuel, and all of that sort of thing. Um, you know, all of the different references that the scientists have talked to about putting sulfur in jet fuel to do that, uh, it's kind of crazy. And, um, you know, the studies they're doing on biofuels right now and how all that works. So you can feel free to go through the rest of all of this. Um, but be sure to check that part out. So over here on, uh, weathermodificationhistory.com, U.S. Navy creates and destroys Clouds using carbon black. You can actually see those newspaper articles right here. Um, you can view them in full size. And what you will see is they are very large. So you can actually go very, very large. Um, and you can go through and, you know, read each of these. Um, all of these were created by Dominic Marama, my brother from another mother in Canada. So uh, you, you feel free to dive into that. Let me go back here. Um, and reset my dang zoom. Apparently I screwed it up. Reset. Reset. There we go. Um, carbon black controls clouds. There's another one. Navy creation destroys clouds. Ordinary cloud carbon black is used. Lady meteorologist toys with clouds to seek to tranquilize, to seek tranquilizer for bad storms. Dr. Florence Van Stratton, 1958. Four separate newspaper articles we were able to find on just that topic. <laughs> what up, Dominic? Uh, weather modification history in the house, in the chat room. That's Dom. Dom, we need to shoot some people on uh, Battlefield 5 when this is over with. Just saying. Um, all right, so all of this can be found in the... If you go to weathermodificationhistory.com, you click on weather warfare right here. You can see all of these FOIAs. So um, down here is HARP and stuff, and NMOD and stuff, and CIA and stuff. But those FOIAs, as you can see right here, are right there. There's the China Lake FOIA, the US Air Force FOIA, and the SpaceCast 2020 FOIA. You can actually download these documents, Owning the Weather in 2025. Test Technology Symposium 1997. Secretary of Defense William Cohen on eco-terrorism with electromagnetic waves. Dr. Evil's geoengineering plan from national lab to global governance. All the papers associated with that. Um, artificial tornadoes. Steering cyclones with a thunderstorm solar-powered satellite by Bernard Eastland, the guy who uh, came up with the heart patents. And this is the one I wanted to show you guys. So where does directed energy weapons come into all of this? And this is the quote. Create localized fog or stratus cloud formations shielding critical assets against attack from energy based weapons in space. I'm not making this up. Like I said, on weathermodificationhistory.com, everything has a link. Click the link, go to the article. This is on dtic.mil. 
operational defenses through weather control in 2030. And as it says right here, the United States uh, needs to appropriate, incorporate the defense against directed energy weapons with the same intensity used, used developing anti-ballistic missile defenses. One of the major drawbacks to optical or directed energy weapons is the inability to penetrate clouds or defense fog. Advances in technology are beginning to bring weather phenomena under our control. Greatly increased computing power and micronized delivery systems will allow us to create specific perturbations in local atmospheric conditions. These perturbations, or screwing with stuff, um, allow uh, for the immediate and lasting ability to create localized fog or stratus cloud formations shielding critical assets against attack from energy-based weapons. The future of nanotechnology will enable the creation of stratus cloud formations to defeat directed energy weapons and optically targeted attacks on the United States assets. The solution the weather control problem involves networked miniature balloons feeding and receiving data from a four-dimensional variation computer model through a sensor and actor network, a network of diamond-walled balloons enters the area to be changed and then both measures and affects localized temperature and vapor content. This system effectively shortens the control loop of an atmospheric system to the point it can be managed. The capabilities in the diamond-walled balloons are based on future, the future of nanotechnology. And this was published uh, April of 2009. So this is the important part of the you know the the whole idea of why and these are stratus clouds to to boot. Hey man, I appreciate it, Mike. Love you, mean it, brother. Always always a supporter. Um, if you guys haven't checked out Mike Morales, go to my channel. Um, you can do that by clicking right here. Go to youtube.com slash Jim Lee dash climate viewer. And on the sidebar, you're going to see Mike Morales. Mike does great uh, daily videos on keeping us up to date on what's going on in the weather. And he's a hell of a fellow, a good friend of mine. So give him, show him some love. Um, all right. So what do we have? What, what do, let's tie a bow on all this real quick. So what we have is we have the military explaining that not only do we want to create cirrus clouds to block out spy satellites and make it darker at night for our nighttime operations, but we even want to create stratus clouds, which are lower, not, not, not as high, not near the stratosphere, the, what's called the tropopause, um, the, the area where the troposphere meets the stratosphere. Stratus clouds are lower. To create clouds, um, <laughs> no, pro no problem fixing your PC, Mike. Love you, mean it, brother. Um, the, to create these clouds to defeat directed energy weapons in space. Lasers from space. So that's why the military says they're going to create clouds. These are official documents. These are Freedom of Information Act requests. You're not going to find them anywhere else. Um, the Sunshine Project, Sunshine Project.org website was deleted. So if you actually go to these FOIAs, um, I'll, and I'll show you real quick, let me bring it up. Um, what you'll see is on these FOIAs right here, that you'll go to down here they're coming from web.archive.org and if you click on this it's going to take you to sunshine-project.org their website was shut down and then over here new nmod 1994 download a short two page 1994 u.s air force proposal to develop the theater scale weather modification system using carbon black and that's where i got the document from you click the link It'll actually take you to the PDF. 
and I also have that PDF link. So there it is, weather modification using carbon black. I dig, I dig, and I dig some more. And the truth is out there. Um, you would not believe what you can find on the internet if you look hard enough. And damn it, I find everything. And right there is where I get that from. Increased cirrus cloud cover, deny visual satellite and high altitude reconnaissance, decreased light level for nighttime operations. Um, and like I said, I, I showed this to Mick West. Um, let's take a little peek real quick. That's me on uh, Twitter. Let me log in real quick. We'll go to messages. We'll go to Mick West. Um, and I said, do you agree? Let's see if we can blow this up some. Do you agree that the FOIAs and the military documents prove that the military not only have the capability of creating and suppressing contrail serious on demand for surveillance and coverage and nighttime operations? I don't know, but probably to a degree. Why not? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I, I basically like razzed him afterwards and I was like, have you, you, you haven't read all this. This is the stuff. Here's the FOIAs. This is basically the content of this video you're watching right now. And, uh, you know, I said, you know, um, he was like, I was looking at the chat and I didn't really think that, you know, or rather that people, they take what they want from what you're saying. Seems like a lot of people are rather stuck on the traditional idea of chemtrails and not really getting what you're saying. And I said, uh, like, I, like I said, YouTube is a schoolyard. There's smart people and ignorant people everywhere, especially on YouTube. I could have gone really hard on you and brought up much more damning material. First of all, you're dead wrong about the link between geoengineering and weather modification. And I pointed out the nexus between weather modification and limited area geoengineering. Boy, I'm on a side tangent now. But anyway, I gave him hell, showed him all these links. And at the end of the day... Um, I, you know, he tried to dodge my question, um, you know, about it. He's like, and I was like, you didn't answer this question, you know, what the F? And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. The military that can do that. <laughs> um, and, and I rarely share DMs, but you know, Mick kind of deserves it. So <laughs> anyway, and like I said, if you, if you're not getting your, uh, YouTube updates, Go to, uh, this is twitter.com slash resonated. That's me. Um, my other one is climate viewer, like I said. And you'll see that this video and all my other videos, I post them here before I go live. So military chemtrails, artificial clouds, blah, blah, blah. And you can see this video is live as we speak right here. So there we go. <laughs> Um, so you can catch them there on my social media. That way you don't have to worry about the YouTube guys not, um, informing you of what the hell is going on. Um, but anyway, so let me see if I had anything else up here, but that's operational defenses through weather control in 2030. There's the military document. Um, I wanted to keep this video short, but Lord knows there's just so much I want to tell you guys. But we could go into all the rest of this. I hope you guys will check out the links and the details. Henry Kissinger, the CIA and weather warfare. CIA tampered with Cuba's weather. Um, does the CIA control the weather? And I go through all of the history on that. The FOIAs that I already mentioned. Um, what the CIA said about you know controlling the weather. Everybody's seen John Brennan talking at the Council of Foreign Relations about um, creating you know how, his interest in geoengineering. Um, all of that's important. This is one that most people have not seen though, and I hope that you guys will check it out because this really gets down to the nuts and butts of how the CIA could very well be involved in all of this. And I'm sure that most of you have never heard of half of the stuff in here. So these are all articles from, you know, climateviewer.com. But down here at the bottom, we have things like the gay bomb. These are the two, uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base, Kim, uh, Joint Non Lethal Warfare, uh, Narco Air, um, the Civil Air Transport, um, Air America. This is from the CIA reading room, CIA's clandestine service, histories of civil air transport. These are all about the CIA's secret airlines. And, uh, you know, New York billing dispute reveals details of secret CIA rendition flights. 
U.S. government secret airline, Janet. There is a secret U.S. government airline that flies out of commercial airports. It's called Janet, or just another non-existent terminal. No, you cannot make this stuff up. I guess the video doesn't want to play because my ghostery kicked its ass. Um, but anyway, you can go check all that stuff out. Janet Airlines, um, the rendition project showing all the different flights that the CIA did. So basically, 27 years later, CIA pilot tells of using secret Costa Rican airstrip to traffic guns and cocaine. So if you think that, uh, you know, the, the, the CIA could not be involved in doing this, during the, the Operation Popeye, during the weather warfare in Vietnam, Henry Kissinger and the CIA got the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy to do the weather warfare over Vietnam. They did not even tell the Secretary of Defense, Melvin Laird. Also during that time, the CIA, Henry Kissinger, and the U.S. Air Force, U.S. Navy did cloud seeding over the Gulf of Mexico to, de to de uh, decrease rainfall that was going to reach Cuba. So they made it rain in the ocean so that by the time the clouds got to Cuba, that Castro's sugar crops would just be destroyed. This was called Operation Nile Blue. Um, so you can read all the history of this and realize that those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. So both can coincide at the same time. You can have jet fuel creating soot and carbon black dust, which is loaded with metal nanoparticles creating cirrus clouds. And you can have the United States military or other militaries of the world flying planes with pumps and pipes that we will never see that pump carbon black dust out to create Jim who you better ask somebody whoever said that in chat P swear <laughs> um, that that both can happen simultaneously that's the purpose of this video you have to understand that you're you're really not seeing the big picture if you think that I'm saying it's all jet fuel because I'm not and um, oh my god let me let me see if I can get that video up yet Dom sent me a video and I was just gonna show that let me see if I can get it up real quick um, but the military has long been involved in this oh there's a memory I gotta share that because I've been looking for that damn Ken Caldera um, Patton. Let me share that in my timeline real fast. That's a good memory. Ah, memories. Memories from the corner of my mind. Um, critical past. Here we go. So let's blow this up. Alright, check this out. So this is what military chemtrails look like. Cloud seeding being performed in Japan. Let's get to the important part. These are what they look like. Bunch of dudes hanging out the back door of a plane. Oh, let's hang some hoses out the back of the plane. And this is what you get. Pumps, pipes, military chemtrails. Cloud seeding. But... Hey, they were just trying to make it rain, dog. You know, I mean, not like uh, Fat Joe, make it rain, but, you know, actually make it rain. So, yes, look at the little hoses just spraying. I'm not paying $335 for a premium license to show this video. I'm going to just show it, the preview on here. It has no sound, so YouTube should not screw with me. But... This is the this is the the military side of things, and this is what it might look like even today: pumps, pipes, transport planes, dumping carbon black dust to create clouds. Why? To block out satellites in space, to block out directed energy weapons in space, to make it darker at night so they can do nighttime operations to give us a. The, uh, critical advantage on the battlefield military chemtrails artificial clouds 
and directed energy weapons. I was going to put and surveillance in there, but I mean, the title would be like this damn long. Um, and, you know, of course, it gets cut off whenever you put it on social media anyway. You can only have so many characters. Blah, 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 blah. But now you know. I'm going to link this video to any smartass in the future that says Jim Lee believes that all chemtrails are just, um, you know, freaking jet fuel. And, you know, for all the, the you know, let's, let's just say mentally slow people who say that there is no such thing as jet fuel, that the jet fuel hoax thing, just, I'm just going to shake my damn head at you people. Because, I mean, my God. You know, jet fuel isn't even a thing anymore. Um, but anyway, so this video wasn't about jet fuel. This video was about military chemtrails. And now you know. Real facts, FOIAs, Freedom of Information Act requests. They wouldn't be admitting this shit if they had not been forced to. So that's the beauty of climateviewer.com, weathermodificationhistory.com. Oh, wait, I didn't even show the last thing. So, uh, down here at the end, uh, let's see, this is the, the actual article, U.S. military discusses the future of weather warfare despite NMOD ban, which shows that carbon black dust FOIA thing at the top, but this is the te test technology symposium, and you can see all of the stuff on here, where I got it from, Arnold Barnes, Op Phillips, uh, Optical Effects Division Phillips Laboratory, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. This is from Air Force 2025, Owning the Weather. He mentions it. All of the slide note details are under each slide. Oh, but wait, this might screw with NMOD. Um, it, the official Air Force position needs to be reevaluated in light of 19 years of scientific advances, in light of advanced weapon systems, which are now more environmentally sensitive, to prepare against technological surprise. Screw in mod, we need to be good at weather modification and weather warfare. How you be so smart, bro, Senator uh, Stefan says. I don't know, man. I was just born this way. You know, like, you know, guy was like, I'm going to give you a couple extra brain, you know, buckets of brains, and I hope that you use these for the right reasons. And all through high school, I drank too much, I smoked too much, I certainly had way too much sex. And finally, I had a little daughter, and I realized that maybe I should care, you know, a little something about these trees right here um, and this entire world because, you know, my kids are going to grow up in it. So I'm now I'm using my brains for more than just making video games, um, you know, designing websites, doing, you know, graphics. I've done graphics design my whole life. Um, but I'm self-taught at everything. And you can. there is nothing you can't learn if you take enough time. And everything, and I do mean everything, is available on the Internet. If you want to learn something, it's on the freaking Internet. Um, so there you go. Um, but let's go back to this real quick. Um, and you can go through this entire presentation and see you know, where I got all this stuff from. This is, And I've got a link to the original document. In, which I'll show you, but here's the slides, you know, on uh, modifying cirrus cloud cover. And so you have a FOIA saying in it, and then you've got Dr. Arnold Barnes at a presentation showing exactly what was in that FOIA. And for those who don't believe it's real, you can come right up here to the top, and you can see the abstract, the compressed PowerPoint file, which is available at archive.org right here. And this originally came from, I'm not going to download it. I mean, it's a zip file, just download it again. But you can see in the zip file, this is where I got the original from, abarns.ppt PowerPoint. And where is it from? DTC.army.mil slash TTS, that's Test Technology Symposium 97, slash abarns.zip. All of this is legit as shit. And this is the difference between me and all these other people. Same thing with the Hurricane Hacking Department of Homeland Security enters the weather modification business on climateviewer.com. And you can go through here and see all of that as well. When it happened, where it happened, where I got it from. And you can see that here. Um, 
straight off. I, I, I archived this, but this is Dr. Steven Salter's um, directory. Let's just put it that way. Um, <laughs> which I, which I currently have linked up and I have it mirrored, but you can go through all of these and see that, you know, basically what they talk about is limited scale field tests, salt seeding tests, carbon black aerosol. That's another term for it. Carbon black aerosol, carbon black dust, upper ocean cooling, ion generators, seeding and monolayer films, or dumping like oil and crap on top of the ocean to cut off, um, you know, hurricanes ability to suck up water and heat, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I go through all of that, the entire history of weather, uh, steering hurricanes and all that sort of thing. So I've, I've talked enough, but you can see more of this at weathermodificationhistory.com. Click on timeline right here and you'll get the interactive timeline. Um, and you can sort through this thing cause it's pretty large. As you can see, there are many, many different, uh, entries in here. And you can show the early days of pluviculture with like Charles Mallory Hatfield um, and how he made it rain in L.A. and San Diego to um, James Pollard Espy, the Storm King, 1841. Um, go to cloud seeding, see all of that stuff. Um, lots of information here. Click tags. You can go to artificial clouds which shows all of the chemtrail stuff from jet biofuels to the tests they're doing, access flights, how they're you know, controlling the jet fuel and the sulfur content to create clouds, or click on weather warfare right here and see all of the same stuff. And you can go through all of that. Um, very interesting stuff. So uh, I hope you guys will check it out. It's a fascinating website with tons of stuff you're not gonna find anywhere else. Um, and shows you all of the equipment, you know, involved, uh, you know, who was doing it, why they were doing it, and all of that sort of thing. So go to weathermodificationhistory.com and dig in deep because all of these newspaper articles are found over here on weathermodificationhistory.com slash newspapers. Click right here and you can scroll through all of them. And there are literally uh, currently... 875 newspaper articles dating from the earliest one is uh what's this patent dom it was a uh, like 18 1880 a patent for a method of precipitating rainfall um all the way through and you can click on these and th these will sort them out to like say 1960 or whatever um it's going to take a while to load these because i'm broadcasting live but Regardless, um, you know, you, you guys can check it out. Um, and I hope you do, because there's a lot of information there. Um, so let me close all this stuff out. So, moral of the story. Military chemtrails? Different than commercial aviation chemtrails. They are real. The possibility is real. Um, that the CIA in the past has worked with the Air Force and Navy to do climatological warfare, weather warfare, environmental modification warfare over Vietnam, over Laos, over um, Cuba. Um, the Brigadier General in Iraq says that we're that Israel and other countries are stealing its clouds and its rain. Um, weather warfare is a real thing. Creating clouds for weather warfare purposes is a real thing. All of this can be proved with the documents provided. Links are in the details. I do hope that you guys will subscribe if you're new here. Um, also, check me out on climate or Facebook.com slash climate viewer, Twitter.com slash climate viewer. Um, and, you know, that way you can get the notifications for when I do these live videos because YouTube sure as hell ain't going to send them to you. Um, but please subscribe and hit that bell just on the off chance that, you know, they decide that they want to actually share with you so um and of course i appreciate everybody everybody who supports me um please do so i i i, I love the thank you letters and and everything i receive learn about the 10 technologies to control the weather today support the environmental modification accountability act it's a way of actually catching people doing weather warfare it's available at climateviewer.com slash nmod and i'd love to tell you guys 
Uh, now you know, and knowing is half the battle, and with the inf information comes power, and with power comes great responsibility. So please use that responsibility and that information to attack ideas, not people. Kids are impressionable. That's why here at this station, we watch the programs and commercials your child watches carefully. He may see bad guys, but not in the role of heroes. And he'll learn that crime doesn't pay. Because your child's welfare is our concern too. That's part of our code. Better than anything you can get without a prescription. Anything. It's the best.